Welcome to Fish School episode 5. In this episode, we'll explore the scene mesh tools to make our map and look into prefabs. Right now, the scene mesh tools are still relatively new, so some features haven't been implemented yet, but eventually, they will replace Source's mapping tool, Hammer. You can start off by changing tool mode into the block tool, represented by a hammer in the top right. It gives you a few options on the shapes you want to create. Right now, there's a block, cylinder, quad, sphere, spike, and stairs. We'll use the block shape. I'm going to re-enable grid snapping when working with meshes and set it to 124 units. To place down our cube, we just hold and drag it out to select the size, then let go to create the shape, and we can still mess around with the size at this stage. But once you're done, you can press enter to confirm. Looking at the original Snot Farm, the levels are characterized by straight wide corridors and large square rooms, so we'll use the grid cell as the lowest common denominator, in our case this cube. Near the block tool mode we also have three other selection modes, the vertex, which will let you select the 8 corners of this cube, the edge mode, for the 12 edges on the cube, and the face mode, which are the 6 sides of this cube. You can quickly switch between these with the shortcut 1, 2 and 3 relatively vertex, edge and face. When selecting a face, you are able to move it, rotate it, or scale it. There's even a fourth one for meshes to change the pivot or center of the mesh, but we won't look into it. Still in the face selection mode, if you hover over the position tool, you can see a tip pop up, telling you that holding shift will extrude the face. So if we do just that, holding shift while dragging our face, it's going to extrude it, turning our single block into basically two cubes stitched together. If we let go, select the two faces on the long side, and extrude again, we now have four cubes, again, and it becomes a 3x3, three three. then we can do a 3x5, and if we select the top faces, oops, I selected a few ones by mistake, that's fine because even after we let go of the mouse, we can hold CTRL and click on the faces to remove them. Or you can hold SHIFT to add more faces to the selection. We can make the cube taller. And now, why am I only extruding faces when we also have edges and vertices to work with? Well, if I go to the edge selection mode and attempt to extrude one, it won't do anything. That's because FacePants hasn't implemented it yet, at least by the time I'm recording this, so if you're watching this video in the future, try to extrude an edge, and if it works, then it means that they finally implemented it. The texture on these faces doesn't tile correctly. Let's fix it by double-clicking a face to select all of them, the control gizmos sometimes get in the way, and over here you can modify the texture. In our case, we want to align it to the grid. Technically, we can also align it to faces, because they follow the grid already. Let's actually change it to another material instead of the default one. Go to the material, mm, change the icons to preview them better, and since the current material is a debug one, we are already in the folder holding all the debug materials. You can even select cloud materials as well. I like this grey grid, called grey grid 4, so I'll double click it to select. And it looks perfect. Reminds me of Gary's mod PHX props. Well, we have everything we need to create our map, so in our scenes folder, let's right click and create a new folder called levels. Go in the folder, right click, create a new scene, and I'll call this one level 1. Open it up. And let's start off by placing a cube with the block tool, same as before. Well, why doesn't it have a texture now? If we go to the view settings on the top right of the scene window, and select full bright, you'll see that we do have a material, it's just not lit up by anything. Let's go back to normal lit rendering, and looking at the scene we had before, you'll find a few other game objects and components that are created by default. We have our sun, containing a directional light component that lights up our scene, a 2D skybox containing the 2D skybox component, which if you disable you can see the background disappear, it also contains a probe component, which is used for reflections and ambient lighting. 
If we disable it, you can see that our snot doesn't reflect the environment anymore. And if you go real close, you'll see that it's actually reflecting some sort of indoor building. That's because it's using the default cube map texture. If we instead switch to render this prop dynamically, you'll see it reflects the scene around it. Or at least anything that's inside these bounds. Let me actually remove this component for now, because we want to place this manually for its room later on. Anyways, we want to bring these over to the, our new scene to light it up. We could just copy and paste them, but we want the lighting to be consistent in its level. So let's actually turn this into a prefab instead. I'll create a new game object called environment and then drag the skybox and the sun in. Right click on the environment and convert to prefab. Let's create a new prefabs folder and save it in there with the name environment. Now if we right click the linked prefab instance in the inspector and open in editor, you'll see that it opens a new scene called environment. But this isn't a scene though, it's a prefab. If you look at the game objects, you'll find our sun and our skybox. Modifying anything here is going to also modify it everywhere that uses this prefab. There's actually another component that was added by default in the scene, called scene information. This is used to store metadata, which you can use to filter scenes and prefabs. For example, if this was an NPC prefab, and we had to spawn a random NPC, we could just add an NPC tag and find all prefabs containing it. We won't be using it though. Anyways, let's go back to our level 1 scene, and in the Assets browser, grab the environment and drag it in. We have our light. Let's do the same for this knot and the player, shall we? Right click the player, convert to prefab, call it player and save, right click this knot, convert to prefab, call it snot and save, then drag them in in our new scene. Let's start creating our map by extruding the cube's faces. I'll start off with a 3x3 room where our player is going to spawn in. Then I'll do a small corridor leading to a 2x2 room, which then leads to a big final 5x3 room. I'll go back to object mode and place this knot in the middle of the 2x2 room. Then, while holding shift, I'll drag it into the final room to duplicate it. Just like how we extruded the faces. It's time to erect some walls so that the player doesn't fall off the map. Remember how earlier we said that we could only extrude faces because extruding edges hasn't been implemented by facepants yet? Well, we really need to extrude edges upwards now to create these walls, but since I can't, I'll extrude all faces outwards by one, then extruding them upward to create some thick walls. I'll select its side, extrude outwards, then extrude upwards twice. I could just select an outer face and extrude it upwards, but that creates a bad lighting artifact. Besides, I think these thick walls are better for collisions. Time to do it for every other wall. And once we're done, double click to select all faces, align the texture to the grid, and switch to that nice grey grid debug material. I also move the player in the middle of the room. Almost done! Let's just set up some light props so that our slime is nice and shiny. I'll create a new game object called Map. Reset the position and move the scene mesh inside of it. I'll also rename it from box to mesh. Then I'll create another game object and call it prob. Add a prob component and place it roughly in the middle of the initial room. For the best results you want it to be at around the player's eye level 
and uh, since I'm having a hard time placing it, I'll reduce to half the grid step. Much easier. Around the player's eye level. Perfect. And now let's track the outer bounds of the probe so that they barely include the walls, the floor, and the corridor. Lastly, switch to render dynamically. Let's shift drag it into the second room to duplicate and do the same with the bounds to include the nearby corridors and do it one last time for the final room. And finally, if we save and play, nothing. I forgot to mention something, the default scene also comes with a game camera which the player controller then targets and uses automatically. But we don't have one in here right now, so let's open the player prefab and just place a camera anywhere with create child and camera preset. This should be fine, let's save, go to our level and finally play. Perfect, just what we wanted. And if we get close to this knot, you'll be able to see that it's reflecting the walls corridors, and even the blue sky. All thanks to the props we placed earlier. That's it for this episode. Thank you for watching.